Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're here again, unfortunately. My foot's f- f- Ooh, boys, it messed up, but we're getting there. All right, this episode is sponsored by Phillips Law, ladies and gentlemen. And if you ever get in a pickle, you maybe roll your ankle... Uh, you do something you think is just not right. You hurt yourself somewhere and you need some a little bit of help. We got Phillips Law and there's over $1 billion plus one for their clients. Trust and rep recommended since 1993. Over 1,800 plus Google reviews. Official partners of Arizona Cardinals and ASU Sun Devils. You need Phillips. And legal advice is very expensive. But with our call line, 602-388-1669, they have attorney available exclusively for our audience, family, and friends. For any legal advice they may need free of charge, that's 602-388-1669, ladies and gentlemen. So everyone, uh, let's get perked up here. Perked up, grab yourself a refreshment. Have a slurp. We got some beautiful guests today. We got my boy Joseph Riggs coming in. He's always late. Reliable Riggs, that's what we call him. And then we got uh, my boy Tommy McMillan from Montana, former Great Falls High three time state champion wrestler and lives in Arizona. Currently 4 0 as a professional. And he's having his fifth fight next weekend here. So he'll probably be next up to the big show. Uh, here we go. Maybe. Um, okay, let me shut this shit off here. Okay, everything's been going pretty good, and everything's been going pretty good. Besides me being in pain constantly because of this uh, Achilles thing, the surgery. I mean, if anyone watched that surgery video, they did a nerve block in my leg. So after the surgery, I got out of surgery, got home. I was like, literally, I can't even feel nothing. I'm good. Worked out. Everything was good. I'm like, damn, this is gonna be a breeze. And then the nerve block wore off and it hurt so bad. If you saw that surgery, the way that doctor was yanking on that Achilles, pulling it down on my leg and then drilling holes through my heel, fucking slapping it around a bit, uh, the pain came and it came hard. So I turned to oxys. I turned to oxycodones. That's the drug. And I was taking those with zero respect of the drug. And I think... I didn't have a good quality stool since Tuesday and Sunday is when I pretty much did my surgical procedure, remo removing some of that. And, uh, that sucked. You ever been real constipated, Tom? Like real bad? Um, I feel like maybe when I was a little bit younger, I can recall getting constipated, but not, not for a minute now. <laughs> Bro, I went through it. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I can do, I can do a couple things here. I can do, I can go to the hospital, which I think most people would do if this happened to Sean or <laughs> some of my other buddies, they'd be in the ER room because I felt like a baby was going to come out. And the thing is those oxycodones, they take all the, the liquid or the, like the liquid and stuff from your stool. So it's just hard as a rock. And I'm talking about hard rock clay. And when you got that as big as a baby's head trying to push itself out, I didn't know what to do. So I took, I took, a, I just told Mariah to go to Target, get some, um, what are they called? Stimulants or things where that make you go stool? Um, laxatives. Laxative, yeah. Yep. I took about three or four different brands of that. Went in the bathroom, took a rip, told Mariah to leave the house, <laughs> put on my red light therapy, got some rubber gloves, coconut oil. And just got her as close to the gate as possible and started digging. And it was, I had to just relax and breathe. And I'm so proud of myself. So proud of myself for doing that. Because that was really going through it. That was. Uh, That's horrible. It was really horrible. It really was. Because I'm like, there, I, there's just no other options. What do you do? I, I bet you people go to the doctors a lot from that. <sighs> And I didn't even think about that when I'm popping those oxys, feeling a million bucks, shadow boxing in my kitchen. And then that that came, especially after Thanksgiving. Good God. Oh, I'd love I'd be curious to talk to Joe Riggs. He's going to come in here in a minute because he was hooked on pain meds and he was hooked on a bunch of shit. He's, he's gone through it all. So I'm curious if he's ever went through that. We'll talk about that when he gets here. But uh, thankfully, I got connected with uh, 
Brigham. Brigham, uh, he's the owner of Ways to Well in Texas. And I don't know if they wanted to talk about it a ton, but I'm pretty sure that they're the ones uh, helping Aaron Rodgers come back. They're the ones with stem cells. Um, they're the ones with uh, all the peptides. And I got on a call with them, and they're pumped. They're going to help me out um, completely. Help me out completely. So I got peptides on the way. We're going down there January 1st. I think Sean's going to be oh, – wait, I don't even say that. We're going down there January 1st, and then I'm going to get some stem cells clicked into this puppy. So hopefully I can come back quick because he's – I was researching it. He's going to be trying to get on the field in like four or five we, weeks, is which, which is unheard of because they say six months for a, a normal – normal six months before you can jog again. Just jog. A year before you can do anything explosive. Yeah. And he said uh, – their business is pretty much just staying open because of pickleball. All these old farts are tearing their Achilles and uh, going in there. But the insurance thing is just such a fraud, dude. It's such a fraud because if you have insurance, you're like, okay, okay, great. I have insurance. I'm going to go through the Mayo Clinic. And I saw an estimate of how much it would be through the Mayo Clinic, and it was going to be twenty, almost $28,000. So then you're like, okay, I got insurance, great, but your deductible is ten thousand. So you're like, oh, good, well, I'm saving eighteen thousand, great. Or you can go self pay. I don't know if you need to know people for self pay. Maybe you do. I did self pay and paid eighty nine hundred bucks and completely did everything. I paid the anesthesiologist, I paid the surgeon, and then I paid the the surgery center fee. So those surgeons own that surgery center together, so you can pay that fee. And I did that, and it was eighty nine hundred bucks. So how does this insurance, I, I, I'm i curious, I need to have some expert on here and talk about insurance, health insurance, and how big of a scam that is. Huge. Yeah, how did you, uh, how did you find out about the self-pay thing? I've never really. I, uh, well, um, phys my physical therapist from Aris, Al Escobar, I called him and I didn't know what to do. And he has all these contacts with great doctors. And he, he, he called the doctor up and he just told the doctor, hey, he, can you do self-pay? And the doctor's like, yep, we can do it. That doctor owned part of the surgery center, so they w went and did that. So that was freaking nice, dude. That was nice. But this is what a, a person messaged me about the Achilles thing because it's, it's so random. I get caught in footlocks all the time. I have strong ankles. I was running for a long time, eating healthy, but not on anything. So my, it just was so random that my... My uh, thing blew out, but this kid said, what up, Tim? My name is Jacoby, and I'm a big fan. Of G I saw your Achilles tear vid, and I noticed you were in some sort of sport running tennis shoe. I was in these pickleball shoes, custom pickleball shoes. They weren't custom. I just bought them from the store, pickleball shoes. I believe the reason your Achilles popped is because the shoe fucked up your natural Achilles function. Those shoes squeeze your foot, provide an artificial arch, and shorten your Achilles with a heel drop to toe drop. This is an unnatural as fuck and causes bio mechanical issues throughout the chain of your body um moving forward especially with your rehab i highly recommend you invest in some barefoot minimalist shoes this allows your achilles to be fully lengthened as it would as it would when you're walking barefoot this is a paramount to your recovery i know your doc may say wear running shoes but that shit will fuck you up blah, 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 blah. so i'm like if it, some of the greatest athletes on earth have had this exact same injury kobe david beckham the rock george clooney and we know those guys are still fucking bitches and getting money. Um, so he said, much love, brother, speedy recovery. So I'm like, those, it probably was those shoes because it makes no other sense. It makes no other sense why my Achilles would just pop off just like a. Yeah, I saw the video it? compared to what you do in here all the time. Grappling big, heavy so dudes weird. and then just making one wrong step. Playing some basketball. Sweet. Had to be the shoes. Yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. So we got Tommy Gunn. You've been down here now for a uh, how many years now, Tom? I think like eight, 2017, when, right when Sugar got on a contender series that summer is when I moved out. So, And then how old were you when you first moved down? Uh, like 18, 19. 18, 19, and we've been grinding ever since and mm -hmm. been beating up kids. Beating up kids. We had a kid come for his last fight. There was a, There's a vlog on my YouTube of us going up to Montana, and there's supposed to fight this kid from Vegas who was just supposedly just scary good on the ground. And Tommy went and cracked him with the right hand, put him down quick. So we're trying to get TKOs and finishes all the ways all the way up to the UFC and get him in the big show here. 145 pounder, really really great cardio. Have you, you've always had that kind of cardio, haven't you? Your whole life. Yeah, um, I'd say growing up wrestling and doing a little bit of boxing, but mainly wrestling. Um, a lot of my coaches would definitely say one of my strongest weapons was just my cardio and just outworking people, winning the third round and mm -hmm. being able to keep pushing, mm -hmm. keep pushing. 
Yeah, and now you're getting confident in your hands, which is nice. Orthodox, you got one of the best Darces in the game. Crazy good guillotine. Um, now we got a guy, a pretty good challenge here coming up mm -hmm. next weekend, and that'll be good. And then I also have, I think, six guys competing in Nogi Worlds next next weekend in Vegas, and they're prep pretty prepared. Um, so for you, what what has been the biggest struggle for you coming up as a fighter? Because you, I mean, we're lucky being from Great Falls. They love Great Falls loves fighting, and if they see someone has some talent, there's local businesses there that'll sponsor us. Coach Willie Payette with the Outback Power Company. I don't know if he owns that anymore. I don't think he does, but he helps us out. Nate Hoyness, uh, the Stink. There's so many just local companies that really help us out, mm -hmm. which makes it nice to be able to get by a little bit. I'd say probably one of the hardest parts about uh, coming up as a fighter was trying to like build the correct team around myself. You know, you, like you want to make sure you have your strength conditioning coach, like your head coach that you really listen to. Joe, you can have a you can pop a squat right here. Uh, yeah, just trying. Yeah, I mean, trying to get fights and whatnot. I went uh, pro right before uh, COVID happened. I made my pro debut, you know, and I thought I was just going to be fighting like a bunch right after that. And then COVID happened, couldn't get a fight for a couple of years. And then right when the regional scene opened back up after a couple of years of not being able to fight, you know, I was staying in the gym, though, training the whole time. Uh, then I got like a bad injury, uh, separated some ligaments in one of my foot. Mm -hmm. So then I was out for another year. So, I mean, I went after my pro debut, I went like three years of no not being able to fight at all which that was also hard because i'm trying to stay in the gym full time trying to train yeah um, so you were out of the gym a lot and then you had a long relationship that ended and that really lit a fire under you and now you just it woke up a whole new demon yeah pretty much just uh being able to just focus on one one thing only yeah. mma you know it makes it a lot easier so hey joe you could throw those uh headphones on and then uh you could talk into that mic there so that's good. We'll get we'll get back to that. Joe, I was talking about the the absolute hell of a weekend I went through because I didn't respect those opioids <laughs> and the fact that they clog you. <laughs> and I know you've been clogged. A time or two. Yes, I have. You've even, you even said your father was clogged and oh, you helped him dug it out. I forgot we talked about that. Yeah, you, um I had to whittle the whittle the turd out of his butt cuz it had no point to it. So it was just like a like a can coming out, like a beer can. And yeah, and and beer can's a good yeah. way to put it. Beer, beer can's a good way to put it. Yeah. Did you have a glove on? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I had a glove on, and uh, it was in the hospital. Thank you. It was in the hospital, and uh, it was it was horrible. That's why when you told me that, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And I wonder if if I would have just tried to push, if it would have actually you tore yourself open, I'm tore sure. tore hemorrhoids, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. those come with a whole slew of. Yeah. I was googling it while I was I was doing it, and I'm like. Fuck. Have, you'll have some grapes hanging out back there. You don't want that shit. It's yeah. uh, you, if you push too hard, it's bad. Tom, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but Joe, you because you've been, you've had your fair share of opiates. In your yeah, life. I was. I've yeah. been. I was. I was addicted to opiates. Yeah. So it's uh, and it's not something you you get better. Right? Like you're you 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 get stopped up in, no matter what. You know. It's horrible. yeah. So when you were doing that, how would would you just shit once a month? Did no, no, I, 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 I took stool softeners on a regular basis, and uh, that was just like your normal vitamins. It, I swear, <laughs> as, as horrible as as to say, I would, I would take that with my 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 opiates, and then other things, and and I was always trying to hide it from Lisa. You know, I would, uh, I, I'd clog the toilet on a regular basis, mm -hmm. just not on toilet. This is terrible. Not on toilet paper, just on the. The sheer well, and it's just, because it's it's not like it's just soft stool. It's clay. It's <laughs> fucking clay. Yeah. And if yeah. you haven't had one, if you haven't had a good stool in five days, yeah, is that how long? How, is that how long it was for you? Tuesday to Sunday. Oh, uh, and it was a fucking nightmare. Mariah's like, you do? Do you need my help? I'm like, no, leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I, I, it's it's kind of a personal thing. You're down there and, and you're you, you're oh just squealing God. about it. It's oh horrible. My God, is it still getting at you? No, 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 no. I, cause I stopped doing that shit. That, that's, that's good. I mean, if it wasn't for that, that making you constipated, I'd be probably popping those. No, <laughs> all the <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> yeah. It's that's, I mean, it'll, it'll get you. Man. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, bad. it's all funny, but people get hooked on that shit. Yeah. Croak. You know, Dude. some people, well, yeah. you've almost, you almost croaked. I remember, yeah. I remember one time that wasn't on opiates. Yeah. Well, what was it? That was Xanax. 
So a Xanax, uh, we had a tough wrestling practice, practice at the lab. And, remember, and, and, I remember and I had Joe, my CT scan and they, because yep. I, I have, a, I'm claustrophobic. So they gave me, and, and I, and I've had problems with those before. And, and, and but yeah, they gave me that because I'm claustrophobic, put me, put me back in that tunnel. And, uh, and Joe yeah. legit, he jumps in my car. He's like, let's go Tim. Cause I'm living with Joe at the time. And he's driving on the wrong side of the road, oh. sometimes driving up on the curb. Stops by Filberto's, gets a burrito. He's like eating it. He's like looking around. The cheese is falling all over my car. And I asked my buddy Leo, because Leo was down I'm just tired. And I said, I said, is he just tired? Because Joe was saying, I'm just tired. That's terrible. Yeah. Oh and and God. Uh, thank God Lisa was asleep. She would have she seen that. She would have beat the shit out of me. So did you stop cold turkey? No, no, no. I mean, uh, off, off, off opiates? Yeah. No, I, I had. Uh, you know, I failed. I tried and failed a lot. Then I went, I went to rehab. Fuck. What was the rehab like? Um, it was just. I mean, it was, it's depressing. Obviously, you come down, you, you get depressed, and you. Uh, and, and and they just have you in a a dorm. Kind of, and I mean, the biggest thing is you have to work. I mean, I worked. I did the twelve steps, you know, and then and had to, had to go through that. I had to work through the twelve steps because it's a serious addiction. And is that twelve steps? Is that a good little program? Yeah. Fuck. It saved fucking. Billions. So many lives. I mean, million, millions of lives for sure. I mean, what you go into because they they have uh, they have NA like Narcotics Anonymous, and you get people in there that you you can't relate to. But in AA, I mean, it's, it's Alcoholics Anonymous, but you just you know you just you, you just put the alcohol. I mean, the opiates in place of alcohol. I so mean, did you stay at a place for weeks? Uh, I, I was there in uh, ninety days. Holy yeah. hell! Okay, I mean, it's it cost it cost me like one hundred ten thousand dollars. Well, it's, it's like you either do that there. or you just fucking. Well, I kept putting it, the, the last time was, I got, because I, I, I was taking these things called somas too, and they're like muscle relaxers, and, and make you feel good. I can, <laughs> I can laugh at it now, but like uh, at the time, I took it, because if you, if you took those before you were in bed, your, your legs would start to, like, your, your, they would give out on you, so I was going to the bathroom, and I fall down, like, like, I, like I had two nerve blocks in my legs, boom, I just fall, and then I, I hear my wife coming, I'm like, oh no. So I, and she goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing sit-ups. And then she's like, <laughs> get in bed. And then I'm like, okay, I'll be in there in a second. And just, oh, and then fucking my, when she called the ambulance, they drug me, they were getting me out of there. And it was just a, a nightmare. What'd so, you have nerve blocks in your legs for? No, that's what it felt like. I mean, I mean that's what the somas made my legs like go out. I mean, it was, I hey, can't, I don't, do you want to, do you want to share one more iced coffee? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. You, you so. like it hot or iced? I like them both. I like them both. What do you think of that coffee? Fucking good. I, Dude, yeah. it is fucking good. You huh? undersold it to me. Yeah. it's Well, I tried to find the most quality shit, and for the sweetener, Mariah is making it at home, and it's honey, vanilla extract, and cinnamon. Really? With the freshest beans that you can get. <laughs> Where do you get these beans at? This, this, this. I went to this place, this big roaster. It's called this press. They have this huge warehouse, and they roast the beans, and they, they did deliver to you fresh every week. Really? So they're not sitting there, and they're greasy, and then they're just old shit beans. So you can tell that you can taste the difference between the, the shit ones and the good ones. Oh yeah, once you finish that, you'll be fired up throwing one twos around this. <laughs> oh shit! Nice. <laughs> well, well do, the um with getting off opiates, and like I still, I mean, on to be honest, I still go to I still go to my meetings. What what do you talk about at the meetings? You know, if I have because uh, there's stuff called uh, addict behavior, you know, which I, which I exhibit, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exhibit. And uh, you know, if I, if like, uh, let me give you a, for instance, like if I'm um, if I'm telling people things they want to hear and not just being honest with them, that's a th those are triggers for me. So I mean, and then that's not like I, if I keep doing that, I'll, next thing I'll know, I'll be fucking, you know, face first in a pile of pills or something. But you know, it'll lead to that, and mm -hmm. then. And so I go to the meeting, and then uh, you know I just talk about it because in, in, the, in these the meetings I go to, it's you talk a little close to that mic. Yeah, there. the meetings I go to, it's called Mad Men. Obviously, I mean, it's just the name of it. There's, there's there's meetings all over the valley. I mean, I, if I'm going, if I'm at someone's out of town, they can look up my meetings wherever they are. But Is there meetings for like sexual addiction? Yeah, for I mean, if the, the reason why I like AA because there's there's success, there's success, there's like lawyers, there's doctors, there's people in there with the careers that just you know well yeah yeah but i mean is, so, is it co-ed yeah yeah it's yeah i mean the, it's, <laughs> it's co -ed. yeah but you go to the those narcotics anonymous meetings and there i mean i i went to a when i was going to when i was in rehab i got out but it was a fucking nightmare i mean it was just people were just looking for drugs period there 
Yeah, so Joe Joe's uh, recently moved back from Great Falls, Montana. Oh. Me and Tom moved down here from Great Falls, and Joe moved up to the God. the great city of uh, Great Falls. That, I almost died up there. Did you burn a couple bridges up there, or well, it's, did you leave there smooth? Yeah, <laughs> but what do you say? Is it a cut and run? <laughs> no, yeah, no, because I'm going to be still going burning bridges. That's bad. No, <laughs> people people are like I was getting calls like like. I got so I changed my number. People were calling me like saying this, saying shit about me, like saying mean things because I left. And it's not like I like what crooked eye or yeah, 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 <laughs> fucking limp dick. I mean, they were just people just just being mean. There's people that were. I was just surprised how fucking salty some people were. You know, it's like more the like, bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, why they fucking they like the bank? <laughs> uh, no, it's just it, people. It's mostly the, the people in the fight community. You know? They, oh yeah. They don't it, realize how it's such bad a, they are. Yeah, well, it's just such a small world up there, and they think that's the world. They really do. And then you leave, and it's like, all right, well, it's not yeah. the world. That's this town of thirty thousand people. When uh, when you when you and Sean would come up, like when you guys when when uh, Tommy was fighting, you guys you and Sean came to the house. Uh -huh. Lisa was was so fucking mad. She was like, because she saw you guys living living. She was they're living our life, Joey. <laughs> we living lavish. Like, she hate she she hated Great Falls. Yeah, I mean she. Uh, it's, it's uh, well i, I should have did it well when there. you come down i mean i'm trying to think of some good things some good things about great falls there are there are good things what name a few <laughs> <laughs> tom what would you say i would say just you, like the, like the i said gr us growing up there we had so much support from those yeah. that those companies yeah, and the, businesses. actually yeah the, a lot the, of support the, yeah. the like the people that aren't fighters that aren't i mean they're like, almost they're all all everybody's almost good they're all almost good people i mean you find some bad ones but I mean, we can get good wrestling anywhere, but wrestling with with Colmac and now they got the the Providence wrestling. There's some there's some good things about it, but it is Great Falls is a place. It's just like there's casinos, oh. wind, and cold weather. Yeah, I so. almost fucking died. I almost died fucking because I this this guy this kid Louis Lopez a sack of fucking shit. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, I was I was in the in my gym and I was I I can't, we just got in. You know, I started holding pads for him or something. And he said he was going to the store. He'd be right back. So it was like negative ten outside. Not too bad, but it was it was it was. I negative ten is actually realistic. Like it gets that cold there, dude. This this past winter it got down to like negative forty, negative fifty. It was, it was horrible. I, I was surprised you didn't blow up and get heavy. I did. <laughs> oh, no, I did. No, it's uh. Well, after this after this last foot surgery, did, did a number on me. But anyways, I went outside to get something out of my car. And then um, the, the, that fucking piece of shit door would lock on its own. So I, I had no shoes on, no shirt on, and I was locked outside. And I and it was too far to walk anywhere. Everything else was closed. There was so like much. 10 inches of snow on the ground. So I, I, I thought that piece Thank of shit you, was baby. coming back. And uh, I finally had to, I finally found a stick and broke the door open. But I was fucking, I was, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how long I was away from dying, but I was, it wasn't too far off. It was fucking. Shivering? Oh, I was fucking, I was, <laughs> it was terrible. But yeah, it's uh. Yeah, the one one there's thing good people there. The good thing about I mean, yeah, the good thing about Arizona is just good weather a lot of the times. There's good food. Oh yeah, uh, that's the for for what we do for what we do food, training. Though. It's like the one of the meccas for training. Every every couple miles, there's someone really yeah. good at some discipline that you can go learn from. You got I mean when like back in the beginning of my career when I first got in the UFC, I was the only per I think I was besides besides Mark Kerr. And Don Fry, I was the third person to get in the UFC, mm -hmm. and there was nobody from here in the UFC. That's and pretty I, crazy. And it, there was nobody. To, there, was, there was nobody to train with. Arizona was looked at as one of the shittiest places, mm -hmm. and um, and it took a while for people people kind of get 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 better and come here. Mm -hmm. And then now, yeah, I think it's in my opinion, this is the probably if not the best, one of the best states in the country. Oh, for sure. <clears throat> but, I mean. For certain weight classes too, like thirty five right now, yeah, forty five. The they're they're literally the best. Yeah, for sure. There's the so best. there's so many guys at one thirty five and just just in uh, this part of Arizona, just part of Phoenix. Is, is oh, for, yeah, it's freaking, it's it's awesome. So yeah, um, so some questions here. There's some interesting stuff I want to go over here too. But one question I got asked a lot on Patreon: Do you save in your career? Did you always save your chi? Do you do that, Tommy? Save your chi and not bust? How long before a fight? Or are oh, you that, jerking that, off right oh, before that's the So uh, that's funny you ask that. Um, I went in the beginning of my of my career. I would, um, and again, I think this goes hand to hand with being a drug addict. Mm -hmm. So I would, uh, I would, I would, I would tell Lisa like, no, no, no. We, it was because I was, I was, uh, I was a limp dick. You know, doing that stuff is, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, 
takes your fucking libido away. Addicted to porn? No, 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 no. God damn no. Oh. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 but I just, I had no sex drive at all. I mean, it was, I think my, it brought your testosterone down and stuff like that. So, but and then, but I really did think there was something I thought there was, I didn't. Uh, Erectile dysfunction. You thought you had it. No, no. Yeah, I, I did. I just, God damn it. No, dude. that's what, that's what no, you're skid that. No, that it, it did affect that. But no, I, I just, I thought there was a, there was a real correlation with uh, uh, zapping energy and, and having sex before a fight. So I, I did abstain, and then I talked to several doctors, and then you know people like Sugar Leonard and Muhammad Ali, they would fuck the day before the day they fought because it actually in turns it builds testosterone, and it makes you fucking want to be an animal. You give them a good fuck, and you feel like a man, <laughs> and, then, and then you go to that arena. And yeah, there's, there's nothing like going you know, just having a flopping dick. They just kind of get mad at you and go out there and fight. That's yeah. a good thing. Five rounds, maybe a little different story though. You're gonna go five rounds and you're gonna have someone who's gonna force some grappling exchanges with you. Cause sometimes you have one of those busts and you feel it in your arms. Yeah. Like, something, something. <laughs> in your arms? So, you do. Fuck. You do. <laughs> oh God. You just get rigid everywhere. Oh God. And it just takes your fucking energy. So did you ever really experience, uh, mess around with that? Like, hey, I'm gonna save my chi. I'm not gonna worry yeah. about chi. Yeah. And, but I get to the point where it was fucking uh, really hard for me. And, uh, Find out was all for fucking nothing because I've done it and not done it and had tough fights, had easy fights, and not done it for like a week and then get knocked out. You're like fucking, sweet. Might as well beat <laughs> yeah. off. I've had, like some of the best fights I've had. I'm fucking, I'd be fucking had a jerk right before. Yeah, or fucking me and Lisa in the in the hotel room. You know, it's it's uh, <laughs> just to uh, experience. So, I mean, probably er early on, but for you, what when do you think? When do you think you were probably the most absolute confident fighting? I think it's for for me. I think it's when you're younger in a spot like Tommy. It's it's uh, that's again. Uh, so when when you are young and you've never been knocked out, you've never been caught. You don't you think you're, yourself is invincible? You know? You've you've never been like had a bad surgery or you've never yeah, really been fucked. There's up. no injuries. Yeah, so like how Tom like what Tommy's going through right now. He's a, just a young, hungry, tough kid, and, and no one's he's never felt. He's never went. He's never went with somebody that just fucking just squashed him. You know, it's never. You don't. I mean, you, you have a feeling of invincibility. You know, definitely. Yeah, and then you go through a certain amount of fights, and things happen. Random things happen in the fight, and then preparing yourself mentally for another fight is a whole different battle mentally. Right. Have you ever worked with any sports psychologists? Oh yeah, I mean, it's uh, my entire career. I struggled with. Um, even before, even when I was younger, even before I, I ever, ever, I've ever got caught, you know, and got knocked out or something, I was never able to perform up to my potential. Yeah. The most I was able to perform up to, to my to my potential was right around the fight master area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had just a fucking great tournament. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why that was because you had so many fucking miserable weight cuts. I, you know, I, I think what why it was those in that fight master house. Fight master was a Bellator TV show that they had on Spike TV. That and fucking was, was so hard, nobody even fucking watched. Yeah, it. and they, they, they just found the toughest welterweights free agents that they could, and there were sixteen of us a house, thirty two initially, sixteen moved into the house, and uh, yeah, and I think I think that. You were so confident in that because you got to know everyone you were going to fight a little bit, and at that time it, you were one was, of the biggest stars, and was, everyone was, was looking up to you. Like when, when oh, I shoot. got there, they 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 brought me in there just to get just to lose. They didn't think I was going to win at all. They not until the first fight, and they saw how I was how I was built. That was because I wasn't I wasn't exactly not, you know knocking the door down before that. You know I wasn't I, I was. You know, By the way, did you see Jacob McClintock died? No, I did you really? Did you see that? You didn't see that, huh? Fucking car yeah. wreck. God damn it! Oh, That's no. sad, isn't it? Yeah, I've known Jacob since I was fucking since he was twelve. Yeah, Jacob McClintock was this really good black belt in jiu-jitsu, like really fucking skilled. Uh, I mean, really good professional fighter too. Yeah, guess he got in a car wreck. I don't know real real details on it, but that's fucking sad. When was the last time you had saw him? Oh, years. I mean, was he was he competing in jiu-jitsu tournaments or anything like that? No, I, th I think he might have had his own gym. I'm not 100 percent sure. God but that's dang, that's terrible. Fucking brutal, young kid too. Yeah, shit. Uh, well, they announced it to Sugar's fight in Miami. Miami main cool. event versus uh, Cheeto. And it's a different fight now because when we were preparing for Aljo, every single news media outlet, every single person on the internet is like, "This Sean's getting sacrificed. He's going to get fucking smoked. Yeah, but is now, it, is that a different feeling? Now everyone's like, Sean's going to kill Cheeto. And it's not as easy as a fight as people think. No, hell no. That little fucker is durable. And it's going to be a, f I mean, we're you think he's gotten better since the last time they fought. 
I don't think he, I don't know. It's just hard to say. You see his fight against Corey Sanhagen I didn't in, see in the big cage. Corey Sanhagen made him look terrible. Did he really? He took him down. Uh, it looked like Cheeto had no idea what to do on the ground, which is weird. When because was this? People say he's a good black belt. Uh, this was, I don't even know, six months ago, maybe seven months ago. No shit. Uh, and then he came back and fought Pedro, and now he's fighting Sean for the title. Big cage in Miami. That is going to be a fucking scene. But, uh, that it's it's uh, what's the date? Uh, I, I'm not sure the exact date in March, probably beginning of March. Damn. But sweet, it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be crazy, dude. Main event versus him. Good for it's Sean, gonna, man. It's gonna be sweet. Hell yeah! But well, that's it's. Uh, how does it? How is it affecting Sean being? Uh, you know, at a different angle. Look, looked, looked at as uh, obviously the person that's gonna win the fight and the favorite. I mean, he's had a lot of fights like that. A lot of fights like that in his in the beginning. Yeah, but I mean, his last how many? His last few fights, you think he, that besides the uh, the title fight, was people thinking he was going to lose, or is always people thinking he was going to win that? People thought he was going to get smoked by Peter Yan. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone thought that. Yeah. People thought he was going to get smoked by uh, Pedro Munoz. Um, before that, what what was that? What's that Brazilian? Um, Paiva Al Almeida. Is that, um, Almeida. Yeah, w people were like half and half. They're like, Almeida's a good leg kicker. He's a good Muay Thai guy. He's going to kick Sean's legs and his, Sean's going to fall down. So a lot of people thought that too. Um, but also the UFC leaked a bunch of fights on the Full Send podcast. They were talking about it, and there was a bunch of fights in the background of their video that got leaked. And one of them is Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page. That's nuts. What? That'd be sick. I wonder, oh, shit. So, they, so fights like fights that they're making, they, they got leaked? Yep, yep. Fights that are coming up. No shit. They got leaked in the background. Michael Venom Page, Kevin Holland is a sweet fight. Has that, so has he, has he already signed with UFC? Yep, must have. Must have. So they got that locked in. I bet I, I'm sure, I bet he got a pretty good pretty good little deal with the UFC. Yeah, I fucking, I don't like to cut his jib. I don't like it. Uh, you don't like like uh, which of the Venom Page? Yeah. He's got a little attitude? Yeah, I do. I like to slap shit at him. He's just, uh, I mean, he's, he's, tough, he's, he's a tough guy to deal with, but. You know, he just, I don't, I mean, I, I haven't been around him a whole lot, but the you know, few times I have, he's just a little cocksucker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Don't look at you riding the pine. I, I mean, well, think. He wants to be think. If, if you want to be, uh, <laughs> if you want to be any, it's weird. People don't give a fuck. This, this, the fights this weekend, a sick fight. Benil Darush, Armin Sarsukian. That's a that's high level right. fight. No one gives two fucks. It's crazy, no, huh? No one give. no one's doing any uh, YouTubers, uh, they're not talking about it one bit that's just because fun. it's that's just, so messed up. It is messed up. It's it, any more. The games has changed. It's it not is. really. It's not like it used to be. For sure. I feel like it's definitely though part of the fighter's job to recognize that though. I think so and, too. Like, get out there, promote it's, themselves, it's a, do it's things. A good, I mean, some people just naturally aren't that kind of person. But, yep. You know, and, and, and what do you do if you're not that kind of person? Do you do you because Colby wasn't that type of person for a while. No, it's like him and Ch uh, Colby and, and Chael literally saved their career by you know deviating from what they were doing. And, um, yeah, and then you bring it into negotiations. It's like you bring in, say, Benil Darush, his contract's up, Armin's contract's up, and then UFC's like, yeah, I mean, you're winning, but no one really cares to see you. You're not going to really main event any cards that people are going to care to see. Yeah. So it's tough. So what do you do if you're not really you, a you character? Do you try to force somebody. it? Yeah, I mean, you do if you don't look real, if it does, isn't so obvious that you're, you're trying to be somebody else. I mean, if you can... You know, there's 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 sticks you can do to, to, but if you really try to be somebody else, people can see the authenticity with that. You know, I mean, so doing something that can make a difference. You know, either. I mean, I have no. I mean, I, I that's a that's a hard question, but yeah, I mean, you have to do something. You can't just let your career just fade into the distance. And that's the thing. I mean, you got to be his character, but you also got to win. Yeah. You also got to fucking win, but. I don't know if it's worth it. Something like someone like Colby, who's so hated. I mean, I think he got a lot more fans now. People, people are weird. They'll hate you really bad at first. Think you're oh. the biggest piece of shit, and then they'll Dude, move over. Like, oh, he's good. so mm -hmm. fucking fickle. I mean, it's it's people just. Uh, if you actually give a shit about what people think, I mean, it's you. If you're human, you, you do. But I mean, people that really put a lot of stock into it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. people's timing. Mean, people can exactly what you said. They can. Love you and do the best. You're the most you're the most popular fighter in the UFC, and then they fucking just want to, they want to roast you over the over the fire. Fire, yeah, it's just terrible. So this is a newsletter I uh, uh, subscribe to. It's this Chris Williamson guy. He has this Chris Will X podcast, and it's really good. He's always talking to these different psychologists, therapists, masters in different areas of stuff. 
Um, and he had some some random questions that he got from this Morgan Housel's pod. And I'm going to ask a couple questions, see what you guys think. There's a lot, so we'll kind of cruise through them quick. <clears throat> God, this your one, this toes are swelled the fuck up. Oh, orange God and just beat. And just like, dude, sleeping with this fucking cast is just like. Yeah, is it hard to keep it elevated? A yeah. little bit. A little bit. You do that. You keep it elevated, right? Yeah, I've been trying to keep it elevated here. They're fucking and, uh, starting to go purple on you. I need to hide that. <laughs> Blur that out, dude. That's unsightly. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yeah. Okay, first one is Whose life do I admire that is secretly miserable? That's there's good probably question. A, That's good question. there's probably a lot mm-hmm. there's probably a lot especially on instagram you a see all these things you know. fuck yeah they're well, fucking they're behind the scenes just fucking and you, and you think that. man that when i want to be like that blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that is fucking that's a really good question okay how about this one what do i believe is true only because believing it puts me in a good standing with my tribe probably a lot of shit there too uh, we'll do the next one. Which of my current values would be different if I were raised by different parents? Everything. Everything. That's what people, I mean, it's, it's funny with religious people. It's like if your parents raised you as a Mormon or some other religion yeah. and engraved that into your mind at a very young age, there's a good chance you'd be I mean, Mormon. Ev- everybody's a product of their environment. You know, if, they, if, they're, if they're raised with a certain, certain kind of people, they're going to turn out that way. Yeah. You know, or, you know, it's, yeah, that's fucking, you can just spend all day on that one. Yeah, for your parents and shit. Drunk fucking. God damn it. <laughs> Drunk abusive fucking bastard. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was gonna go on, the, go down a trail. My dad was right <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> short arm. Oh, fuck. Why? <laughs> uh, Joe's dad actually has a short arm. He, what the? Did, what, did, what did he just, blow it off? <laughs> what do you? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, his friend blew it off with a gun. Shotgun. Oh. Took it right off. So they're fucking around saying, hey. So my grandfather left a, left a 410 shotgun out. Mm-hmm. And uh, my dad, they were like five, six years old. And this is like in the 60s. So blew the fucker off on the ground and in and, and part of his chest. And then they, they were able to reattach it. And I mean, it's. Has he ever talked to you about that accident? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they were just fucking around with that thing. And he's a young buck. And yes. They're playing, playing, they playing Cowboys Indians, honestly. And then his friend picked it up. And shoot off, and then he, when he got after he got shot, he doesn't remember anything about it. But even still, my grandfather died like five years ago, mm-hmm. and he would blame it on my grandmother all the time. Like, you, you, I, I, you let him fuck around with that. Yeah, and my grandfather. Why'd you give my son the bow? <laughs> <laughs> he, my grandfather just put the gun on the on the like where my where he could get it, you know, and which is which is obviously not something to do, and and leave a leave a loaded shotgun with with it cocked. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, so that uh, blew his arm off. Yeah, and then. They turned to drinking. That no, no. That was what year? Nineteen sixty. Sixty. How the fuck did they go and stitch that puppy I have back no up? Idea. I mean, because actually, it was so unbelievable to me. I had to do some research on it. So they blew the bicep part off. The shoulder, the shoulder, and top of the bicep. Yeah. Top of the bicep, and it fell off. And they they rushed him to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. They grabbed that thing. They put him in the car. He brought spent him to the hospital. His, uh, six or seven birthday house. So he's in there like like five months without leaving. Yeah. No. Man, what a fucking beast of a surgeon. Yeah, to strap that thing back up yeah, with 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 the fucking whatever, uh, and it still moves good, dude. He can, yeah. It's he has the dexterity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he can. <laughs> like, it, it, it looks and acts like a like a like a midget arm, you know. Like yep. well, not the stumpy fingers one, but you know the long ones. And it's uh, I love too when you get to see him. I lo- fucking love the guy. He, that's the one he'll put out for a handshake. Yeah, too. like I I used to, when I was younger, I'd be like, God, no, I I was embarrassed of it. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. But I mean, which is terrible when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, it's uh, but he would just wear tank top stuff. I'd be like, fuck, just dad. proud of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm like, Dad. I mean, but but I mean, it's but think about it. It's something fucking crazy he came back from, bro. Like, yeah. who shoots himself? I mean. I, Oh, I oh shot God! Myself. Yeah, he like, didn't even like shoot father, like son. Yeah, that's all I hear about. Fucking. Yeah. Uh, my dad, though, my dad's got one of those long arms. <laughs> yes, it was. He got in a four wheeler accident <laughs> on the reservation, and it completely snapped his collarbone. And they don't have doctors in the. Tommy, did you notice it? Hmm. Like he's got that fucking hanging arm. Uh uh-uh, oh, I haven't. It's about as long as my dad's is short. Oh yeah, they meet in the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they knew. The my middle. dad stopped short. Fucking uh, Bugsy went. Shh, yeah, he covers it. No Google problem Dad's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. dude, his fucking shoulder completely fucked. Let's it heal that way. Now his arms like way down. His whole body's fucked up. And then I get in a car wreck. He still pumps that jab though, right? Yeah, he does. <laughs> and then I get in a car wreck. Boom. 
uh, and, I, and I could have probably got a lot of money from the insurance agents, but I, I was like, I want to go to wrestling camp with the boys. Got pinned like 30 times. <laughs> Literally, anytime someone put a power half on me, I would just, <laughs> I just, I just roll back. <laughs> Literally, bro, get pinned. But now I got a long arm. So you, when you walk behind me, my lo- my arms were good three inches longer on oh. the right side too. So what, did, did you did you even talk to an insurance company? They gave me six hundred bucks. Are you fucking kidding Death me? Dead serious. I <laughs> still think that threw off my shit. Like, my well, whole yeah. Body. Well, and I think I'd have got more if I didn't go to the wrestling. Six hundred dollars. Why? Yeah. Who came up with that number? Who knows? <laughs> Buy yourself an Xbox, that. kid. Fucking okay. What do you want? Six hundred dollars. <laughs> How old were you? Yeah. Uh, junior in high school. Fucking life. Yeah, you would. You could, uh, I mean, what were the circumstances? Well, this girl, we're we're in the back of the Bitch. car, and she she's turning off Tenth Avenue South, and just doesn't even look. And there's this Dodge Durango going probably forty five on Tenth, and just smokes smokes me right on my side. My head, boom boom, <laughs> bounces off. I'm sitting there. I think that might be the only time I've been knocked out cold. But then I start coming to, and I'm just sitting there in the smoking car, and she's saying, get out of the car now. My parents, I'm not supposed to have people in my car, and I'm just sitting there, my shoulders fucking She's yelling off. again. Fucking yeah. Bitch, that's terrible. Yeah. So Never so, got it fixed. So so the, uh, they, it was, it was, you were in the back car, is that legal in Montana or no? You had to sit in the back seat, that should be legal. Oh, but I thought you said, I thought you meant the bed. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so, so, okay, and, and yeah, you could have made, you could have, Got some bread I mean, from they, at least the girl or in her oh, insurance. You could sue both people. Oh, God. Yeah, That's even, where I need Phillips Law. Oh yeah, they they'll come through. They'll they take, will. They'll, they'll take probably eighty percent of it. They'll come through. That's okay. <laughs> you would get more than six hundred bucks. Yeah, no shit. Okay, how about this? What do I believe the most with the least amount of evidence of it being true? Several things. Do you What's have one? one thing for you? Uh, well, well. What okay? What do I believe the most with the least amount of evidence of it being Flat true? Earth. That could be religions. Yes, that could be religions because there's not a lot of evidence. Uh, probably me. A big one is marijuana. I I mean I think there I don't think there's a lot of great science about it, but I like to look at the, the little bit in that's in the what, little. What I, is some of the evidence? I mean, God, benefits of marijuana, science benefits. I don't think there's a lot. I think there's quite a bit on CBD, but the actual herb. You've been you've been hitting the herb lately. I've had my hand in the petticoat too. <laughs> That's good. I mean, you don't get constipated. No, no. I just, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot better than the alternatives, you know, because I'm I'm in pain a lot. Fucking. And it probably when you smoke a good weed, and it, and, and I I, tr- I truly believe it matters what kind of weed you smoke. If you get some of this weed from these dispensaries. It literally like you're smoking fucking anxiety and you just don't feel good. It's just bad. That's but why if you I get always some, hated that. That's yeah. Why. If you get some good grown weed, some really healthy grown weed, maybe it's grown under the sun or it's really taken care of. There's not pesticides. There's not shit sprayed on it. And you feel that it's like, and you're living a somewhat healthy lifestyle. It brings some good shit to your mind. It opens up some different neural pathways. And you, sometimes when I smoke, I get my most creative ideas and it's just good for me. Dude, I know shit, it is. The shit that you are, uh, that, what's that fucking sack when I was here last time? Oh, the bag. Yeah, yeah, I fucking, I felt like a rotten buck. You know, Did I, you? Yeah, I don't, didn't feel like I want to go home and just throw my shit in the ground. I just, I felt. Maybe after down. this we'll have a little smoke, get our minds right. That's fucking nice. So how about you, Tom? What's something you believe the most with the <clears throat> amount of, least amount of evidence of it being true? Probably, I guess what I'm doing, like I truly believe like my destiny is to fight and the, uh, that that's just what I was. Yeah, but there's evidence of that being true. There's yeah, if you were you're some, winning. If you were a shitty, you were just right. terrible. Yeah, like everything. I guess you, if, you shouldn't be doing. It. But is there evidence of like the destiny type of thing? If that's even like real. Yeah. Okay. I guess one thing that I've like looked into is like the whole, um, like the infinite infinite uh, timeline thing. Like that. Like. God, I want that to be real. Like the like that like you're living like like when you get deja vu and stuff like that there's other timelines that are existing like where you're making different choices they're just like a little bit different. Oh, you've, you've, and like, you've delved into this, haven't you? I don't know, and like that like you, well, like stoner kids. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's cool. No, I need to look into it. What's it called? Infinite timeline. Yeah, like just watch infinite Rick and Morty. timeline theory. It's pretty crazy. Like and it's, like I don't know. Like then when you start making the right choices in life and like getting more connected with like the thing you should be doing like i don't know stuff just starts to work out better because that's like the timeline you're supposed to be living on type of deal i don't know it's pretty pretty interesting but yeah it is interesting okay 
Well, one thing for you real quick, though. Or, or, or Like law of attraction, stuff like that, for sure. Yeah. There's no evidence of it being true, but there's got to be something there. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? Who has the right answer, but I ignore because they're a bad communicator? Oh, God. Probably a lot of people there. My therapist. <laughs> hey, really? Yeah. Have you been to many therapies? Yeah. I used to do therapy all Relationship time. therapies uh, or what kind of therapies? Everyone you have. Yeah. I need to, I need to, I want to get some of those therapists on here <laughs> and, discuss, funny, yeah. <laughs> and discuss some shit. Yeah, you should, man. Have yeah. you been through some therapists that are just actually just like fucking dumb or, and some that are like really good and you've used some of their tools? Yeah. The, the one, so I just, um, my therapist for a long time that, that was, she, she was, a, she would try to help me with, you know, even like, you know, my performance anxiety and stuff. I was, she was, I was with her for a long time. Um, she just retired, and I got this. this you were talking a little close to that mic. I got, Sorry, I got, it's uncomfortable. I got uh, this this new one that's just shit. God, my voice, hear my voice so raspy. <coughs> you sound like a smoker. Yeah. Siggy smoker. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, that's not bad. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> No, but yeah, this he, like, he brings up a lot of good points, but he has, he's just, I, I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable with him. So anyways, yeah, but dude, therapy, you really, like I've made a lot of, a lot of, a lot of personal breakthroughs, and you know, I'm, I'm a lot better person with therapy if I wasn't going. Yeah, it's weird with therapy. People are like, I don't, I'm not going to go. There. I mean, it's a, a little bit easier now because you can find some of the best therapists and listen to podcasts from them and they're going to give, have give away all that. Too. Yeah, but then a lot of people think like, I'm not going to a therapist. It's like, why? Why not? They're they're literally a mind mechanic. Yep. You bring your car to the a, a mechanic to work on your car. You can't bring that to there. Yeah, there's 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 starting to be less of a stigma on it, but yeah, people still do look down upon it. Mm -hmm. Is it pretty expensive? Yeah, I mean, depending. I mean, if you have if you have anybody, because some most of them most of them don't take insurance. You know, ones that ones that do aren't. I find aren't, aren't the best ones. But if you find they're if they're less than you know, two hundred bucks an hour, they're not any good. Mm -hmm. There's fucking quacks, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, I mean, stem cells now. Everyone, everyone, everyone's like. I got stem cells now. This doctor came in in this little outfit the other day. What? He's in this nurse's suit. And he's like, hey, I got stem cells for you. Anything you want and peptides, whatever you want, blood work, whatever you want. I'm like, oh, okay, sweet. I look at his Instagram. <laughs> this is like this fucking random dude. What, like, what, what, how does he, why does he have these? I don't know. I, I don't. I is have he a no real idea. doctor? He's one of those doctors that, that like to put cement in people for plastic surgery? Yeah, probably. Probably. So it's like you got to watch out there. Jesus. Okay, how about this one? What do I think that... These are some random ones. I haven't. What do I think is ambition a good trait, but is actually envy a terrible one? Might what, be a, repeat that. What do I think is ambition a good trait, but is actually envy a terrible one? What uh, do you think is? What? what, what it, we'll we'll skip that one. That one might be a little too deep for our level of understanding. What annoys me about other people that I sometimes do myself? Is, is telling me what I want to hear. I, I'm the king of that. <laughs> I fucking hate that. You hate. I tell people what to, like, instead of giving them a black advice. and white answer. I mean, even like if I can't go somewhere, like I'll be there. Sure, it sounds good. I fucking hate people do that. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, now why do you do that? It's I, I, I watched my dad do it when I was a kid, and and I just, I could he I could I remember him being talking to one of his friends saying, "I'll be over in like an hour," and he's drunk on the couch. I'm like. Oh. And and so and that and and as a kid I, I I hated small conflicts or awkward situations. But how many relationships have you fucked up from that? Oh, countless, countless. I mean, and I I step four I, um in twelve steps is you know, making amends to people that you did that with, whether you did it through addiction or what. But because it's just a tough a tough. There's something in your mind that you just don't want to make the matter something to where you say, hey, I can't make it today. Yeah, That's I mean, a, it's, let's do it another day. It's or something that is so easy for most people, but it's something. Like I'm, I'm got, I've gotten so, so much better with it, but it's actually hard for me. Like if you ask me, hey Joe, can you something? Can you help me move something in my house? And I'm like, and I'll be there. I want to. Yeah, it <laughs> sounds good. I have no idea if I can make it or not. Which, which if I and and, and then that would be if you you wouldn't give a shit if I said yeah I can't do it, but you yeah. wouldn't. And I'd be like, oh man, I I come and on, you know, kicking like beating the bush around. That's good. You notice it at least. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've like gotten a lot better. It. Yeah, it's for a long time I did. What about you, Tommy? What annoys you about? What annoys me about other people that I sometimes do myself? Anything? Like probably showing up like late when like everyone's like got a 
like say like there's like a dinner and you can't sit down until like everybody gets there but like i feel like i show up late sometimes <laughs> quite yeah. a bit but i then, think, like, I if think I'm, that's common that people hate what they yeah, do yeah but if then like someone else is like the late person i'm just like come on come but on then I'm like, bitch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold a good, good account of yourself <laughs> yeah yeah i think people i don't know where that comes from because it's either people are really fucking late or they're really early well, i don't know if it comes from your childhood or seeing your parents do it or people hate the i mean you hate the the you know the biggest uh, the biggest flaw in yourself, and, and it's usually what you hate in other people. It's, it's always, a, always a correlation. Yeah, I always get. I hate being late for shit. I hate being late for shit. It's like adds anxiety. I'm like, God, it's just fuck. I hate it. So I just would rather just be 15 minutes early all the time. God. Can chill out. Do you find yourself you're always more early for things? Early always. See, that's I wish I'm getting trying to get I'm trying to get better at that. Lisa is always a half an hour early, early to everything, mm. and uh, like she started working a job, and uh, which I hate, but. She's like she starts at, she goes in at eight thirty, but she's there at fucking seven forty five, just sitting there, I, and I, I, I think that's a bit excessive, but yeah, I think she does like that. Okay, how about this one? How much of my, my how much of my nostalgia is a false or incomplete memory of the past? That's cool. That's nice. A lot. <laughs> For a me, a lot. <laughs> yeah. If I think back to high school, if I think back to high school, if I really think back, I'm like, man, high school was sweet. I fucking went to. Went to a school, got some puss once in a while. Uh, but then I really think back to high school. I'm like, I fucking hated high school. My my life at home wasn't very good. Uh, I hated school so much. They put me in fucking tarred classes. As, I, as did I. I, you did too? Yeah, before I was, they, they found out I had dyslexia. I had dyslexia and they fucking. They I thought said, it was tardation? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. Yeah. Um, so nostalgia, nostalgia about different things. Because you think, what about you? How much of my nostalgia is a false or incomplete memory of the past? Probably everything. I mean, every, anytime you hear someone say a story, that's why I'm like, there's some people that are good storytellers, but when they're telling stories from 15 years ago, I'm like, you're just making up all this <laughs> shit. Right. They probably don't even realize it. Fucking, that's that's true. I think everybody they build they build on their past because unless it's a really shitty memory, you know, they always build you know certain memories up more yeah, than they are for sure that's a good one um how about this one what in your profession is impossible to know no matter how smart you become what in your profession is impossible to know in our profession it's like dude you could be a hundred percent positive you could bet your fucking house that your fighter is going to win and then they don't yep. they throw a kick and they break their foot or they they slip and they roll just you can't prepare hard enough. Mm -hmm. it, it don't. The, uh, that's the thing about fighting. Variables. Yeah, there's too many variables. That's the thing about fighting. Is like the the better man's not gonna always win. Hundred percent. Um, David Deutsch said said beware of the difference between prediction and prophecy. Prophecy purports to know things which cannot be known. Be be aware of the difference between <sighs> prediction and prophecy. That's why some of these religions that that uh, predicted that the world was going to end and then it doesn't end all oh, back in 2012 like, i mean a lot of different ones the, 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 i think the most recent one was 2012 even that even what had religion people shook uh it was, it was it came from the mayan calendar oh, oh okay saw that. Mm -hmm. and now the mayan calendar means nothing to you <laughs> yeah well I, I mean it's not it's like i was a i was a scholar of that i just everybody was jabbering about it and yeah they even putting up uh um big billboards and i remember that i kind of remember that too that was scary yeah, I sat in my living room just looking up. Like, oh, yeah. They made a movie about it called 2012. Oh, did they? It's actually pretty good. Is that yeah? That's that the one that when uh, with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, they put everybody in like these steel like arcs, these big boats. Oh and, like, damn! Rescue. Oh, that was with people. um fucking uh, John Cusack. Yeah, yeah. You always like movies and actors and shit. You yes, always I like do. that shit. I do. I my I wish I I could be a film critic. I fucking love that. Okay, how about this one? Is this thing I'm worried about actually a problem, or am I looking for problems to worry about because they make me feel in control? Is this thing I'm worried about actually a problem, or am I looking for problems to worry about because they make me feel in control? He I think solves that, his problem if you solve them, yeah. Well, that happens a lot to people. People, when they have no problems, they create problems. 100%. And I think that happens with girl girlfriends. I mean, guys too, obviously. But girlfriends, when they don't really have a passion, maybe their guy has a passion, and they're their their guy is their passion that's all they that's all they have in their life so then they just start creating problems create all this drama and just like fuck if things are going too smooth 
you literally can create problems. I think a lot of people do that. Yeah, hell yeah. People always have a pro- have it, don't they have a hard time letting things be if things are good. Mm-hmm. They, they, fucking, I do it all the time. Oh shit. Okay. Um, here we go. You take this phone. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, there goes our questions. Hopefully they'll be back in a little bit. That's a good one. I was watching the uh Nelk Boys most recent podcast. Uh-huh. With Dane, with uh, the Nelk Boys. Yeah. They're like a pretty He's popular not really YouTube with, group. But they had, not really on YouTube. They had Dana. Uh, <laughs> What'd you say? He's not really on YouTube and the internet. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. They Let's had, laugh at him. <laughs> fucking dick. They had Dana on there, though. <laughs> and they were talking about how, like, the Bob Menery is like that. Because of, like, when he was, uh, like, doing things with the Nelk Boys and things were going good, that Dana kind of said, like, that he almost just, like, things are, were going so good for him. He's at, like, the pinnacle of his career, like, in this really good podcast connected with these really good people. Gonna make some real And he money. should just like focus on like keeping those people happy and nurturing that relationship. But instead like he just kind of started to like make these little problems over like these like things. Self-sabotage? Yeah. And, Why like, do people do that, Joe? I'm the king of that. Oh. Self-sabotage. And well, J- Bob Menery, I mean, I've been around him quite a bit. He's just big on the Adderall. Who is that? You can just, he's like a, he's like a voice personality. He has like a funny voice. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he voiced? He he, vo- he voices like funny things. You got to watch his Instagram. It's actually pretty fucking funny. He'll uh, just pretend he's an NFL commentator or a baseball commentator, and his voice matches up really well. Okay. He just says funny shit. Uh, but yeah, just being around him, he's just like he's just anxious, and he, I think he does Adderall a lot. And I'm sure if you don't do Adderall at high doses for years, I'm sure it's gonna fuck you up. It gives you brain damage. Does, yeah, does something to your, your nervous system. Yeah, so people who self sabotage like that. Who knows? It could be so many different things. That's where if you go to an actual mind mechanic and try I, I, to use some a, of their that's tools. That's one of the biggest things I, I, I went for. Is I, I self-test, sabotage everything. Not, I don't knowingly do it. I mean, it's, it's you know, it was, like Lisa always says, I can, I can fuck anything up, you know, and I really do. I mean, it's, I've got, again, I've gotten better, but that's a, a big problem I've had. Mm-hmm. And something about being a fighter, too. Something about being a fighter. And fighters, for some reason, they just want to do what they don't want. Not, not all of them. But a lot of them are just like I'm if, if you if you weren't if you weren't in, involved in the sport, what do you think your your, your life would have turned out? Do you think you'd be still being Great Falls, kicking <laughs> up dust? Probably. Uh, Mariah and I have talked about that quite a bit. I'd probably be in Great Falls, just front page of the paper. <laughs> Redhead gets caught at Tokyo Massage. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's good. Something. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, how about you, Tommy? Yeah, I mean, I'd probably be. Hustling drugs. Yeah, like literally in Great Falls, Montana, doing like construction, hustling drugs on the side, oh, gambling, how about drinking, you? partying. Yeah. I'd be a cop. That's sad, yeah. Yeah, but that local cop beats the fuck out of oh, some yeah, random I, homeless I, I, guy. I, yeah, and now yeah. he's fired. So yeah, you've been a cop for a couple of years, maybe a year. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, you know, it's. Yeah, probably, probably the, the uh, someone just some bum spits in your face. For, oh, that's and then they have 1, a camera on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I'd be hammering on bums. Yeah, for sure. No, not just bums. I mean, the way people talk to cops nowadays, like just fuck you, pig. Just oh, and, and they just have to sit there and just because every every limp dick, you know, they think they know the rights and they can just do what yeah. they want. Or like a lot of people come up, they go to police stations and they video record, record it just for a cop to come outside. It's like a start <laughs> yeah. altercation. I mean, that happens yeah, yeah, nonstop yeah, yeah. every fucking day, it, just in the valley. And uh, yeah, so I, I could see myself fucking kicking someone's teeth mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about this? What in my field? What in my field do I think is law? Works all the time, but is actually just a rule. Works some of the time. I don't know. Fuck. What in fighting there's do I lot. think there's work, a, again, works so all the time, but is actually just a rule? Works some of the time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot mm-hmm. on that. Okay, the next one. What do I think is a universal truth, but is actually just a norm unique to my own culture? That's a, good one. a universal truth. I mean, marriage. Marriage. Is marriage pretty universal, though? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I mean, I think so. Is it? What do I think? Is it, but is norm is just unique? I think I've been in Abu Dhabi. Don't beat your wife. People are really, you know, that's our culture. I, I, I mean, I think it could be okay. It, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. You're right. That's definitely one of them. He's, he's trying to ponder that. Yeah, Abu Dhabi. Being over there, it was a different world. Everything was What's just so much different. It was weird because there was just literally no, no homeless people. 
because if you have a normal job, you work for a hotel, you work for a gas station, you work for anything, they ha- they're required to give you room and board. Really? So you have your food taken care of and your house taken care of, and now you work and you have your extra money. And then on every single corner of the whole city, everywhere, there's cameras. So there's no, uh, there's no like bad shit going on. There's no th- thieves. There's no anything. Is is uh, it's not it's not like you know I can I can China. It's the same thing, but you know it's communism up there. It's not like because like, in Abu Dhabi is it just the lack of corruption that makes it like that? Yeah, I have I have no I have no idea. I wonder what the jails like there or prisons like there. I've never been to China, so I don't even know. Uh, you don't want to. That's a fucking. Is it dumb? Yeah, you can't. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, it's led by you know a dictator. It's fucking. Yeah, but that's crazy. How about this one? What was true a generation ago that no longer is? So and, many things. And who is clinging to that truth? Um, fucking. What is what what is what was true a generation ago that no longer is? Uh, that that not well. This is probably more than probably two generations ago that you got to get a job. You yeah, got to get a job and work for someone to make them rich. You just got to get a job. Yeah, Maybe work your way up. Going to college and you got to go to college. Like the American dream is the biggest thing. Every, get your own house and all that stuff is out of reach for 70, 80 percent of the people nowadays. That's that's actually exactly in a generation. You know, like it's just starting now. People people can't get like someone Tommy's age that you know is coming up. You know, he's gonna have to, to buy a house. He's gonna have to make the money to tell you, pay for. 80% of that down, you know, and no yeah. else. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're self, even if you're self-employed, you got to have five years of taxes. Yeah. For five. Sure. I thought it was if, three. If you don't have a, a substantial amount of money to put, put down for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, fucking, you have no Dude, choice. Even, to even if you did, money. even if you do have a fat chunk of, to, to put down, they, they wanted five years of shit. To, to get, what, what to, when you got your house, what, how much were you, like, were you trying to, um, we we trying to borrow fifty percent of what the house is worth. Oh, more than that, more than that. Yeah, that's what probably I'm put eight, eight, like eighty down, maybe. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's even even more so. They they wanted five years of taxes, and even when you, your credit's decent, eh? Yeah, I worked it way up. I did this thing. It used to be fucking shot from my student loans and stuff, and I'm like, fuck, I ain't getting shit ever. But student I got this loans. thing called an Open Sky debit card where you pay them. And then you use that card, and then repay the card back, and it builds your credit really fast. If you just fast. use your credit, if you, I mean, just on credit cards, I fuck, I've made my credit score unbelievable. Pretty quick. Within a year and a half, you know, I jumped by two hundred points almost. I remember my dad was just always, "Do not fuck your credit up. You're gonna fuck your credit." And I'm like, "Oh, fuck my credit." And fuck, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, dad. <laughs> if I can't buy something cash, I don't need it. Yep. That's <laughs> that's fucking. That's that's yeah. If you don't have credit, you don't. It's. it's it's terrible, especially nowadays to do anything. It's like yep. fuck. Because you want to spend on somebody else. You want to spend somebody else's money. You want to spend your own money. Like even like making putting your gym together. You know, it's like that's one thing I think I did money. right. That's one thing I think I did right. I started so small that I didn't have to borrow money. That's huge. Yeah. Well, do you guys know in the 1980s a four year degree at ASU? You know what that cost? Are you talking to uh, point that mic toward? Yeah, there we go. You can, you can point. Okay, it a, 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 a four year degree at ASU in, in like 1983. You know what that cost? How much? Just guess, both of you guys. Thirty thousand. No, less than five thousand. Like for four, a four-year uh, degree. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I mean, obviously, depending on what you, like what you're going for, but uh, that was before the government got involved with it, and they started doing uh, you know government student loans. And then once they did, um, which is a, it's a loan that can't be dissolved, you know, bankruptcy. the Fed loans. Yeah, and and then so the uh, universities just kept jacking their prices up. I think it's up by. Like three thousand percent since then, it's nuts, dude. And and then that that just gets ignored. That's no big deal. Come on, you got to get your education. Let this little eighteen year old sign away two hundred thousand dollars if they <laughs> want. Let them make that decision on those Fed loans. And then just like I was telling Tommy before you got here, the healthcare thing. Like I paid oh. for my surgery out of pocket, and it was like eighty nine hundred bucks around there out of pocket. Paid the sur- paid the surgery center, paid the surgeon, paid the anesthesiologist, and then I saw a bill if I would have done it at Mayo Clinic. Clinic, it would have been twenty eight thousand dollars. So your surgery only costs eight nine hundred dollars. Yeah. How the fuck is that? Just paying the people, paying the actual people, not having to go through insurance, go through the Mayo Clinic. Where at the Mayo Clinic, yeah, that, they can charge you whatever they want for sure. And you know, when you go, if okay, you're going to the pharmacy and you could you go up there and, and right when you state they have ins- so like there's a there's a medication that cost uh, six dollars. That's what it cost them and. Um, if you right when you when you say you have insurance, they can't divulge that to you, 
and so they, so they automatically charge you charge you you know uh, whatever your copay is you know twenty bucks whatever it is. Yeah, I think a lot of doctors now are moving to where someone can pay them either yearly, and then if something happens, they go straight to that doctor, and the doctor takes care of them. And, well, yeah, and yeah, stuff. It's the mo- healthcare it's system now from, before it just fucked over the people that was you know the the, the patients now. Now the doctors are getting fucked over. You know, look at old Hawks, you know, getting at it. That's, oh, God. That's, that's terrible. We do not want to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. What is partially true, but I believe in it so absolutely and take it so seriously that I've turned in, it into a dangerous belief? I kind of know. What is partially true, but I believe in it so absolutely and take it so seriously that I've turned it into a dangerous belief? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just the thing, get I, more like puss, a, I guess. <laughs> get more puss, thinking your uh, your dick will rot off. It won't. Yeah, but it will. <laughs> but it will. But if mine is because I'm so afraid to take opiates, mm-hmm. and so every surgery I've had, <clears throat> I just you know gut it through. I think if I just take one, I'll just become a raging fucking addict. You know what I mean? Which, mm-hmm. but that fear has helped me stay away from it. You know. This next one's pretty interesting. Are there things going well in my life today that I will look back on and wish I had quit while I was ahead? For me, a little bit. For me, there a little bit there is because it's like the gym's growing, and I'm like, how big do I want this gym to get? Right you, now, it's you just keep like wanting to grow. Not really. I'm not not really like I don't want. I just want to grow. I just want. I like it. I like knowing people by their names. I like it being pretty quaint. I think when when you get so big and then you have such a large overhead and now you have six seven hundred members. And then something like COVID happens. The more responsibility, the more stress, for sure. Yeah. And it's like, how? okay, what are you going to do with the extra money? Fucking, I mean, help your parents. Money doesn't make make everything. It's uh, people, there's obviously billionaires that want to blow their head off. They they did a a research thing that the most happy people in the world are the people that make enough money to pay their bills and put a little bit bit away. You know, those are the most happy people in the world. Yeah, well, you can just see it with the with the billionaire lifestyle. They just get t- high highs so much, and then it's like, what what else? And then you're just fucking. How much can you just always have those high highs, drugs and girls, and then th- this and this without having to, every high high comes that's not a, a real, low, that's, low. That's not realistic. There's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing to dream about. It's, I couldn't imagine that. Like probably Dan Bazarian. I think we talked about it on the last pod how him he that's the highest highs. All the time, 100% of the time, he's got 10 sexy bitches, he's got fucking drugs, he's got unlimited amounts of money, cars, planes, and he talks about it, how just depressed and just fucking low it is. Yeah, don't most of those people, they find salvation in something fucking arbitrary, you know, something that's not, that's, that you can, you and I can do for free. You know, that's, that's happens all the time. Yeah. Like yeah. pickleball. <sighs> They say pickleball, bro. That that surgery center. They're like, man, just happened from pickleball. That pickleball is keeping us rolling because they have I at least the six, same six, thing. To, six to ten people a week. Shoe company's got a deal with the hospital. It's it's a mostly <laughs> knees. Yeah, no shit. It's mostly well, knees. dude. He said a keys on, on the old folks. Oh yeah, I mean, someone your age that snaps that fucker in half. That's guy. It's so rare. That's fucking carny jeans. <laughs> God. Oh, nice. Um, you took it like a stallion though. If I heard that, I would have went, yeah. you, you just went, ow, and you sat down. And I sat down, and I sat down for a while, and it was weird because right when it blew off, it probably honestly hurt a 4 out of 10. It just, my foot was just completely numb, did, but did I couldn't it, move did it. Did you kind of in shock or no? It could have been. Did you know what happened? Once I felt it and Sean heard it, he's like, that was your Achilles, wasn't it? I was like, fuck. Did it roll all the way up? Halfway. Because I on well, that surgery, God, that was fucking rough just to watch, man. At me. Well, it, yeah. You but, liked watching it? No, it bothered me. Actually, it did. It disturbed Jaden really bad. I, I'm like, Jaden, watch it. Because I just saw him hammer on you the first time. I didn't realize they they took the spindle out and jammed it back in your heel, hammered it more. And I, 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 think I, haven't, I don't think I've seen the last minute of it. It's too much of it. Oh, wow. Okay. You've seen it, Tommy? Mm-mm. Coward. I didn't watch it. Dude, yeah. you got to. It's, like, it's, it's someone you, like, it's, if, if that was like you, it's, 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 it's even, it's worse, but. Someone you know, and you're like, I can see his fucking ding, toes rolled up. Ding, ding, yeah. Ding. Fat, they beat flat, the f- red ass. <laughs> Dude, and they did that test to see if your foot would jump up. Mm-hmm. It just laid there like a fucking, yeah, that's sad. So gay. I'm glad, dude, but you're, look at your fucking foot, man. It's horrible. It, it swelled up because <laughs> how much they hammered on it. Yeah. Well, they were rough with you. 
They beat on it. <laughs> Tom, you got to watch it. Man. Imagine some I of those know. surgeries, though. Some of those doctors, like I said, when, I'm, when I when I was underneath with my jaw, I woke up that doctor's fucking yanking on my mouth, like cuss, cussing out the nurses. Wait, wait, wait. Imagine what they do in some what? of those surgeries. Lisa, Lisa's because, you know, Lisa went to, she, going to medical school, school. She sat in so many surgeries. Uh, this one fat guy woke up and like all the whole the whole OR was in his pants. Like I take a picture. Him a jack? Oh, no, <laughs> they're in his pants because he was really fat, and uh, and he was starting to wake up. And then the the um, uh, whoever was was the boss, everybody walked in. Like they were all standing in the guy's pants, like taking a picture showing how fat he oh. was. And uh, and I remember being my friend's a plastic surgeon in Vegas, and uh, he was he does a lot of boob jobs and tummy tucks. And he uh, he was I, I was watching it one, and this this woman was was asleep, you know, getting ready. To, they, they he was starting on one boob. And then he drags out the other one. It was just falling around pit. He's like, "Look at this thing!" Slap it around. I'm like, "God damn it!" Oh, can dude. you imagine what they do? Yeah, you fucking know, grab your dick, like swinging around. Yeah, sucking on a tip. <laughs> seriously, uh, but seriously, if that, if that, if that, if that surgeon oh. knows that there's no cameras and he's the only one in there, yeah, and he'll, he's revved like, up. Like that guy, that guy, that dentist in Phoenix five years ago. That he was, uh, he, people, he would people go unconscious. He started picking up, dancing with them, and then they put a hidden camera in there, and then he would. And he's he, grinding on. And them. then, th then slowly, because they would wake up, and like, like their like their bra would be off weird, and, and so enough people said that, so they they put a hidden camera in there. The police did, and found a mouth fucking like, <laughs> like pumping face. on their faces. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> before my before he started, God. he did oral surgery because he would kick everybody out, and, and it, the, his employees thought that was weird. Yeah, he has the the, the seat bent back. Uh, 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 he's fucking Sh yeah. Fuck. Look it up. Look it up. It's fucking. That's crazy. It is. Yeah. So Lord knows what people do, man. So <laughs> <laughs> That's what. Yeah. No what you say? Yeah, what? they're just fingering oh. me. <laughs> Look at yeah, get his red asshole. <laughs> oh God. Look at that flat ass. Oh, God. Okay. Here's this next one here. <laughs> <laughs> is good. there is there something in my life I is there something in my life I think I'm passionate about or focused on, but I'm actually just addicted to it? You said porn. I could say <laughs> See, porn, I do a pretty good job because I know how evil it is. I still don't mind pulling it up once in a while and just in, enjoying. <laughs> enjoying. <laughs> once in a while. Are you one of those people that, that watch it for hours or you just you just hammer <laughs> off and leave? Uh, Hours? Dude, have Jay, you, have if you, you got that, an hour or two to kill. Have you seen that intervention with, uh, with uh, what's his, Aaron Brink? Remember him? He was, he's, he was in the, he fought uh, Andre Lofsky in the UFC. I, yes. I, I fought him. And uh, he he's, uh, was a meth addict and he would do on that show intervention and I thought it was a fucking most hilarious thing. It shows him retiring to the room to jerk off. And it's eight hours later, he comes out. Uh, uh, I'm like, are you kidding me? He, and eight he's talking, hours? He fucking, yeah, he's, he's looking at some shit then. Yeah, he's just beat a hole in his dick. I mean, but uh, I, I couldn't. I, it's just, that's just absurd. How many, how many times in one day in your life have you busted? Oh, fuck. Um, probably eight, ten. I mean, no. <laughs> Yeah, in when a I was day? young. Yeah, for sure. Oh my god. Yeah, for sure. That's almost every hour of the day you're awake. Every couple hours, yeah. Every, every time it, it would fucking get out. You want another piece? I just <laughs> I give you, you all just, you want. I bet you just felt fucking empty after that. I would fucking I sure rubbed him raw, I'll tell you that. My probably max, honestly, is probably four. Really? Well, that's a dismal fucking shot. Yeah. Even even four. when you were going through puberty? Yeah. At that time, I was fucking couch cushions, you know, whatever, and get my hands on. I mean, I think everyone was. Yeah, <laughs> fucking shampoo bottles. <laughs> Anything with a hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so. uh, but yeah, it's uh, I that guy. He also did porn, and so uh, he uh, he was he. I mean, he's he's a, you know you know what I'm talking about right. Aaron Brink, yes. You need to look that intervention up. You'll fucking knock your socks. It's a YouTube yeah. video. Okay, hell yeah. And 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 be precise. Uh, the jerking off uh, part. Uh, is there something in my life I, th I, I, in my life I think I'm passionate about or focused on, but I'm actually just addicted to it? I mean, could be I could, you could say weed, but sometimes when I'm sick and stuff, I take a week off weed and I'm fine. It's not like I fucking die. I'm for some reason uh, vitamins. I think I'm obsessed. I mean, I think it's just good for me, but I think I overdo it. Like to the point where I, I don't even I, there's no, and again there's no fucking proof that these are even doing anything for me. Yeah, you're just, fucking placebo. Just like you said, hope in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking right. Um, okay. I'd be running probably. 
feel like I'm almost like addicted to running. Well, like, there's I, fucking. I remember being early in my. I mean, early on in my career, I fucking love running. Before, just, before yeah. your knees failed you, and you're fucking. Yeah, I, I still have. Good, I still have good knees. I've always been a decent runner. Your feet, well, my feet. If I, I, used to, I used to run the same because you get a runner's high. I was well, Joe, to his, his feet literally are like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you fucking dick. That's fucking. It's it's. But I would run a lot because you, you get to runner's high and you start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, and and you. I lie to myself. I'm fucking flying and mm-hmm. fucking. I'm really going. To, <laughs> yeah, but it's I, I got I, I th- running, but running is really good for you. Yeah, some of those runs, some of those, I mean, some of the lab runs that Jared's done, and yeah, some of those hard runs that really mimic a fight, they're just fucking good for your mind, dude. Tommy, remember you know, the hill I was telling you about? Yeah, the stairs. Yeah, uh, uh, Tim, remember you know, the hill in front of my house? The, yep. the one uh, you and Sean, we always just sprint up that. It's fucking like that's, I don't live in the same house, but I live right by there. It's uh, I still I if I I can't fucking you point that mic a little bit I can't I can't that that's that's hard on my fucking knees but uh, John uh, we're we're gonna start bringing guys there to do conditioning over there it's really fucking good oh yeah yeah something about your your heart rate being that high for that long of a time and still being strong mentally knowing you got another sprint coming up it's it's good fucking good for you okay here we go do I spend more time defending what I already know instead of trying to learn something new yes a lot of fucking people dude. I mean, I'm trying to think, do I spend more time defending what I already know instead of trying to learn something new? That's most people. I'm sure all of us do it. I do it in this sport. You know, things like instead of uh, broadening my horizons, <clears throat> I'll stick to what I know, you know, and, and really defend it. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard in MMA because someone will be teaching something completely stupid. And you're like, bro, just why are you teaching that? And then they'll go <laughs> knock someone out with it. It's like, well, Dude, it's I, fucking MMA. This, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so many things like uh, it's recently yeah <laughs> really fucking got my fucking balls mm-hmm. yeah looking at things from the outside and if you if, if you run into someone who's actually smart and that you respect and they got a different view than you that's what changes you, you should sit there and listen to them and listen to their view and want to talk to them and want to hear about why they think that that's that's fucking huge um, are there people in my life who I consider kind and compassionate but they're actually just too shy to tell me hard truths Probably a lot. Probably yeah. a fucking lot. Just tell me the truth. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what would Instagram look like if it were an honest reflection of people's life instead of a curated <laughs> highlight reel? Fucking just depressing, <laughs> dismal. That's the thing. It's like I'd rather see Instagram be positive and people posting the good things about their life and, and stuff than sure. just posting all the negative shit, like if, how they're if, so. If you don't keep, if you're not one of those people that just compare yourself to other people, then yeah. yeah, then then it's a good. It's a wake. You wake up morning, want to see happy things and seeing the guy fucking, you know. Yeah, Sitting yeah. there on his pills, just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. jacking off. Fucking on my third jack today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking. You want to see something good? You don't see that shit, or do you? What would Instagram look like? That would be crazy, though, if it were yeah. an honest reflection and everything bad that happens in your life, or any any type of bad thought you have, you just put it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fucking bad habit of doing that. That'd probably be a funny ass fucking app. Yeah, I'd get on there. Would you post your failures? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. Me, I just a picture of me happened. being constipated, <laughs> crying on the toilet yes. with a rubber glove. Oh, God. <laughs> Chipping the fuck. Oh, God. I loved it. When I got on the phone with you, I fucking laughed for half hour straight. You have no idea. I, I was panicked. I was treating Ryan not good. I was panicked. I'm like, I don't know what to fucking do. And then she has friends over work, working break. on the gate. Oh. And I, I have my rubber glove on. I'm trying to scoot to the kitchen to wash my hands. And there's someone sitting in my kitchen. And I just go throw myself on my bedroom floor like, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, is this really the way I'm going to fucking go? Oh, it's good. Yeah, when you made that Elvis fucking, uh, that, that, that's great. That's it's uh, th- When you're taking a shit, it's kind of a. You're in a fucking, uh, you know, you know, it's you're in, you're vulnerable. You fucking don't like your uh, your asshole exposed, especially if you're you're trying to push out that hog. Well, yeah, I don't mind it, but when it's a fucking baby's head, you're trying to push uh, out a baby's head of clay, I and it won't fig- physically fit through the fucking hole. <laughs> oh God, that's fucking. I, it's, if I, if I wouldn't have, uh, even if I wouldn't have helped my dad with his predicament, I would I would have I would have sympathized with you because I've, uh, I've I've came across the beer can or two. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, well, we'll you'll never be that. the same. I'll tell you that. Mentally. That, oh, I thought you said the whole. I'm like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Scared a little bit. No, <laughs> mentally, that's good. I, it's good that happened because sometimes you take those oxys. It's like I just want to feel nothing. Yeah, but how you said that? If if uh, you didn't didn't come across that that hard time, you'd still be popping the pills. Oh yeah. That's yep, you know, there's up. fucking that's 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 there's there's not in there's people need to be way more fucking aware of that shit. Yeah. 
Okay, this next one here before we got uh, a little striking practice. I'm going to have some of the boys do some boxing. I think Sugar might be coming in. Uh, I think he said he was going to come in at noon, so maybe you could have you help him a little bit, Joe. Sure. And then uh, this next one is, am I just being nice as I could be rather than just as nice as I need to be? I don't really understand that one too much. That one's decent there. Uh, other than that, I mean, I think that was a good pod, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for popping in, Joe. You can follow uh, Joe, uh, the real diesel rigs. I'm pretty sure on Instagram. No, no, no. I, oh, that's a new one. This. No, I got. I, don't, I, I have six media. numbers for you in my phone. Yeah, fuck, I'm cutting them running, baby. <laughs> Just running out of minutes. Punt that phone <laughs> in the lake. <laughs> Right out of minutes. Oh, fucking. Uh, an Obama phone. Fuck, it's failed on me again. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, uh, I smashed too many phones in my day. And then give Tommy a gun a follow. Where are you on Snapchat and, uh, and Instagram? Tommy? On Instagram, it's TommyGun145. And then on Snapchat, it's just Tommy underscore McMillan. Yeah, give him a follow and uh, get on board before he turns into a big star. It's a big star. It's always fun to get with those guys before they turn into stars. So give him a follow. And other than that, uh, for my ultimate supporters, patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy. Stuff going up there all the time. I was I was planning on coming out with a BGJ Fanatics type video and just releasing it on Patreon. But I fucked up my stick. So um, <laughs> that's going to have to happen after. But other than that, there's still a lot of stuff going on on there. So... Uh, hit the like and subscribe button. If you enjoy the pod, comment below. It helps out. We're almost to 100,000 followers on YouTube, and it's been a fun grind. So love you all. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.